Oh, I feel like I'm perched rather precariously on the end of the chair. Let's cross them legs and get ourselves comfy, shall we? Peeps, I may be here a while. Hello, my lovely bookish friends. Welcome back to another video with me. It is my cue once again in my new library location. It's not a library, it's a little, few little shelves of books, but it's all good. It's very pretty around me, I like it. So, today's video is my September wrap-up. Now, I read three books this month, which is beginning to become kind of the standard amount of books I'm reading. Uh, I probably could be reading more if I wasn't listening to one book on Audible, but I'm enjoying it so much that I'm not going to sacrifice that. So I'm physically reading two books a month and kind of listening to one Audible book. And so I'm just going to let you know what books I read in September. So the first one I read was a Kindle book. Now, this is going to be awkward. I'm going to try and show you the cover. Well, I say cover. This is the page on the Kindle Fire. It's called Whistle in the Dark. It's by Emma Healy. And I bought it on Kindle absolutely ages ago. And whenever I go to show people the cover on previous videos, I've learned this. Um, it it doesn't have one on the Kindle Fire. It doesn't have one. It has one there. And it's really pretty. It's got all like birds flying around a dark sort of void in the middle of the cover. But when you open the Kindle version, it's not there. Which I think is silly. But... Hey ho, who am I? Um, Whistle in the Dark. It's about a mum called Jen and her daughter. Oh no, is her name Lana? Lena? I'm gonna have to find it. Bear with. Bear with, peeps, bear with. Lana, it's Lana. So, uh, it's about Jen, who's the mum of Lana. And Lana has uh, gone missing. And the book actually starts at the point where Lana's just been found and she's been taken to hospital, having been missing for four days. And there was a big manhunt, which we didn't see. You know, there were um, news reports and things and conferences, but we didn't see that. The story starts from where she's found. And it it kind of goes through the, the next period of time in their lives where Jen is trying to connect to who, her daughter, who has gone through something a bit scary uh, and Lana claims to not be able to remember what actually happened to her while she was missing. Uh, and the book went on and I, uh, I did really want to find out what happened to Lana. And I think because I'm reading a lot of crime at the moment, I was expecting this novel to be more uh, crimey and kind of detective and Maybe not to find out where she'd been, because I thought maybe she'd escaped or something, but to figure out what happened and why, and if she was taken, was she abused. I wanted I wanted it to be a bit more crimey. This book really is not that. Um, it's not a bad book. I quite enjoyed myself reading it. Um, I did find myself wanting to find out what happened to Lana, but I also wasn't, like, I wasn't compelled as I have been in other novels that are a bit more crimey, because this book ended up being a bit more of a novel about the mother-daughter relationship and the family after something horrific has happened. Um, side note, without spoiling it, you do actually find out what happened to Lana in the end, right, 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 right at the end, and um, it... Oh, I don't want to say it disappointed me. It just was it was just different to what I was expecting and it was kind of interesting but at the same time it 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 uh, it, it didn't fulfill me as much as I'd hoped that it would. But there we go, it's fine. Um I I did enjoy Jen as a character. I thought she was a really really interesting um narrator and uh, just her trying to reconnect with her daughter was quite fascinating and I think that's kind of universal. It doesn't have to be about, it doesn't have to be after something horrific, it can just be about connecting in general. But there was something that had happened to her daughter and she was desperate to find out and I don't know, it just, it didn't, it didn't tick all my boxes. I didn't love it. I'm just gonna put that out there. I didn't love it. I won't be rereading it. It was, it was perfectly enjoyable for 99 pence. Uh, which is what I paid for it on Kindle, but I wouldn't go out, make an expedition and go out and buy it. It isn't something uh, that I'm uh, <laughs> going to read again. And I, I don't know whether I'll be reading more of Emma Healy unless she does something a bit more that floats my boat. But it was it was all right, you know. It was just all right. 
And that's fine, you can't love them all, can you? So that's the end of Kindle. Do you like my Kindle case? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, okay, and so, moving swiftly on, what uh, the audiobook that has kept me company through the month of September. Oh, it's been so fun, I've enjoyed myself. I'm going to show you that the, the physical version. This is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling, obviously. Um, I've been listening to it on Audible, read by Stephen Fry, and it was the perfect September Audible experience. Um, I, I feel the same way about the film, actually. It just takes Harry Potter in a bit more of a, I don't know, it's, it's just, it's, it's not a different direction, but it kind of is. It expands on the history of the characters and the past and what uh, Harry's parents go through at, at school and what they got up to and he gets to know them a bit more. And there's a cool, um, you know what this book's about, Sirius Black and uh, The Grim and I just, I just really enjoyed it. It was a perfect September listen and read because you know the weather changes it gets a bit more autumnal um, and this book just feels autumnal to me even though it goes through the whole school year and the last bit is sunny I think in the film it's rainy a bit more it's a bit more gray and wet kind of a bit more realistic as to this country's weather um, but it was um, I do like this one and I enjoyed listening to it I liked um, I liked Professor Trelawney. I think whenever Stephen Fry brings in a new, you know, there's there's a new defense against the dark art teacher or a new, um, just a new character as the the universe grows in in Harry Potter. I find that Stephen Fry is kind of enjoying it even more. And I think his Professor Tr Trelawney was brill. I thoroughly enjoyed listening to that. Um, what else? And I, I, not a lot else stood out for me in terms of Stephen Fry's performance in this one. It was. It was a case of it's continuing to be to be good and be interesting, and I I think his Dumbledore voice has changed slightly. I think I think that what Dumbledore brings to this book is slightly different, and he he isn't as kind of softly spoken as he as he was in the first two books. So yeah, but yeah, I really enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and yeah, nice. Um, and the book that I enjoyed the most this month, and I finished last night at one o'clock in the morning because I couldn't put it down was I know I'm staying in JK Rowling territory but that's okay right you forgive me it's The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith which is the um what's the word pseudonym pseudonym yeah I was gonna say pseudonym but then I was like no that's not right but it is right it's uh, JK Rowling writing under a different name and The Cuckoo's Calling it's a crime detective novel following a private eye called Cormoran Strike, and Strike is, uh, he's a veteran from the war, he has lost a limb, and he is a private detective who likes to smoke, he likes to drink, and he is, he owes a lot of money to a lot of different places, and he is sent a temp to work in his office called Robin, and Robin is very efficient and their relationship is really, really good. I, I, it's a, it's a, it's probably the the biggest um, pull for me to these books is is Robin and Strike's relationship. Um, in this book, the crime is uh, a supermodel who apparently commits suicide from her London flat, and oh, she falls to her death in snowy London, and it's it's a bit grim, but. Uh, Strike takes the case because he's not entirely sure that um, he's going to be able to pay his bills this month, quite frankly, and he just goes in and he unravels the story and figures it all out, and it was it was interesting. I mean, I've seen the TV show, so I did remember who done it. I'm not going to spoil it, but I did remember. But I didn't remember why or how, so that was quite interesting for me to find out second time second time of experience in this story. What I did like a lot about this book was um, sometimes I find that when I am watching crime dramas on telly, uh, specifically telly, or reading them as well, not as much reading them, but mostly on telly, um, the detectives and policemen refer to different people involved in the investigation by surname, and that is how they differentiate them. And they're all like, you know, oh my god, we got to get Evans to do this, and but Jones just said this, but what if Thomas was doing this? Oh, there's a bunch of Welsh names for you, I didn't expect. Um, but 
sometimes I get a bit confused. I'm like, who is Evans again? Which one was Thomas? And I can never remember. But in this, it felt quite clear. It was not simple. There's a lot of characters doing a lot of different things, but it was very... I, I, I didn't struggle at all to keep up and I found it quite clear who they all were, what they were all doing, and I thought actually the crime and the reasoning behind it and stuff was quite clever in the end. Uh, I cannot wait to read number two. Um, I can't remember what it's called. The Silkworm, possibly? It's arriving this week. Um, I can't do my September book haul video yet because some of them I ordered in September haven't arrived. They're coming in the beginning of October, but I'll get there. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just am itching to read more of Cormoran Strike now. I've got, you can see it there, um, the new one, what's it called? Lethal White is on my shelves, ready to go. Um, but um, this one, I, I, I couldn't put it down. I kept on going back to it. I'm so glad I bought it. Um, and that is what I read in September, guys. It was a fairly successful month. I think that the, the, the kind of, <laughs> how can I, the pedestrian whistle in the dark was completely eclipsed but then by The Cuckoo's Calling and it did, that was my favourite completely. And all the while hearing The Prisoner of Azkaban taking me through September was a, quite a nice experience. Um, so um, yeah, on to October, October the 1st tomorrow. Uh, what have you guys read in September? Anything good? Anything autumnal? Any crime at nine? Anything I need to know, please let me know. And have you read those books? Um, what did you think? Uh, and I hope you guys have had a nice September and I will speak to you all very soon. I will bring you more bookish videos, more vlogs, more everything. Because, you know, this is the season of more. Thank you very much, guys. Bye. Guys, one more thing I forgot, I completely forgot to say, and I meant to start the video with this, oh yeah, cold coffee. Um, but I have had a very, very productive, successful September the 30th so far. I woke up and I've been in the kitchen quite a lot today, but that's not been a bad thing at all. I started my day by making a lemon drizzle cake. Uh, it is gluten-free and I, I tasted a little sliver and actually it was, it's really nice. I'm really pleased with it. The texture is good. Um, but more on that in another video. The second thing then I made was a butternut squash marinara sauce. Um, it's kind of a big tray of veg that you roast together and then you can turn it into whatever you want. Um, but I turned it into kind of a soupy sauce that I'm going to use on pasta and things this week. Um, and that was very autumnal and I felt very good about using up all the like veg and stuff that needed to be used. And then speaking of using things up that needed to be used, that's hard to say. Uh, I had some strawberries and some grapes left in my fridge that were kind of on the turn and I decided in my infinite wisdom to turn them into some jam. Um, I do like making myself some jam occasionally uh, because I think that it does taste so much better than shop-bought jam. It's hard to explain why or how, but it does. Um, I had to do a little bit of research first, but I did figure it out, and I made a strawberry and grape jam. Uh, unusual, but it tastes phenomenal. I'm so excited. I have one jar that I have sealed and is, um, is it's really dark and lovely and that's in my cupboard under the stairs waiting for um, oh, a Victoria sponge or some scones or something. That's going to be divine. Uh, and I have one little tiny jar which I actually strain so it's just kind of the, the jelly, I guess, not the fruit. Um, and that one it wasn't quite enough for a full jar to seal, so it's gone straight in the fridge, and that's going to be used now on toast and things. Um, but it's actually a really, really nice combination, guys. I implore you to try it. Um, and I just wanted to say that I just feel lovely and autumnal today. Um, sometimes spending a day in the kitchen is just something that I love to do. And now I'm recording videos, and I'm going to edit videos, and I'm going to do a bit of reading, start my October booking. October booking? October reading? This afternoon, I'm just... I'm just happy. Tomorrow I go back to work, which isn't a bad thing either. It's going to be nice to see everybody and take them in some lemon cake, but they don't know they're having it yet. So shh, it's a surprise.